Man United have already secured a deal to sign Dan James from Swansea to become Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's first signing this summer and things are starting to heat up for United after what was a quiet first few weeks in the transfer window. Who could follow Dan James through the door? According to reports, Sporting Lisbon midfielder Bruno Fernandes and Crystal Palace defender Aaron Wan-Bissaka could well be the next two signings by Solskjaer at United this summer. But what are the reports? Where are they coming from? Are they reliable and would they be good signings that would fit United's system that we're trying to build next season? Let's run through all of that together. And before we do begin, if you are new to United People's TV, make sure you go down there, hit the subscribe button, hit the notifications bell as well. If you're a regular, drop a like on the video. But let's get straight into this one. First up is Bruno Fernandes. Now, the 24-year-old sporting Lisbon midfielder had an absolutely sensational season last year in the Portuguese league. And there's been noise around him being linked to United, to Liverpool, to AC Milan. But now there is a lot of noise surrounding him and a potential move to United. The latest report suggests that an agreement has been reached between Sporting Lisbon and Man United and that a deal to see Bruno Fernandes go to Old Trafford is now very close to being completed. But who is the man behind these reports? His name is Pietro Balzano Prota, who is a journalist that has a strong reputation when it comes to AC Milan and transfer news. He's considered a very reliable journalist in that respect. Which may have you asking, why do we care if an Italian journalist is talking about a Portuguese player moving to a Premier League club? Now, the links here are the fact that Bruno Fernandes was linked to AC Milan earlier this summer. On top of that, reports also suggest that Bruno Fernandes' father was a scout for AC Milan in Portugal. And also, if you look at Bruno Fernandes' career, he spent five years in Serie A at three different clubs. So, he's got a lot of links to Italy prior to his move to Sporting Lisbon, which could suggest why Pietro knows about this first. And that's exciting. So while it's not official, you can't just dismiss these reports. And if you look at Bruno Fernandes' season last year, it was sensational to say the least. In 53 appearances for Sport in Lisbon, he got 32 goals and 18 assists. Now this is an attacking midfielder we're talking about, not a central striker, not a number nine. Somebody who plays off that front line, in front of the midfield. 32 goals in all competitions. That's better than Frank Lampard numbers. I think his best season, he got like five goals less than that. Truly staggering numbers from Bruno Fernandes. And as he showed in the Nations League final between Portugal and Netherlands, he loves a shot from outside the box. Had twice as many shots in that game than any other player on the pitch. And he's a proper playmaker. Can play off the left foot, off the right foot. Can score goals with both, get assists with both. And it's easy to see why he would improve United. But how would he fit in at United? That's a question you have to ask. Would he play as the attacking midfielder? What would that do to Paul Pogba? Would he play further back? Because he has played slightly further back in central midfield, although he has played most of his games as an attacking midfielder. Would Solskjaer switch the formation to play two attacking midfielders, play him and Pogba? Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But it's not hard to see why United fans are excited about the idea of Bruno Fernandes joining this summer. We certainly need to improve in attack and he would improve it tenfold. Now, I actually said Bruno Fernandes to United, I felt like it was a three out of 10 chance of it happening. I always thought that Man City were the better option for him because, you know, David Silva's on the way out. You could easily see where he slots in and fits there. And maybe I'm wrong, and I hope I'm wrong, because he'd be a fantastic signing for United or City or anybody that managed to snag him from Sporting Lisbon. But what do you think about these rumours? Do you think Bruno Fernandes is the right sort of signing? How do you see us lining up if we have Bruno Fernandes in the team? And would he be the right sort of signing this summer? Let me know what you think. But as well as Bruno Fernandes, Crystal Palace defender Aaron Wan-Bissaka has been heavily linked all summer and United are making their move now for the 21-year-old. Reports suggest from multiple sources, Sky Sports, The Telegraph, that United have had a £40 million bid rejected by Crystal Palace and that they want a bid more in the region of 60 million if United are going to sign him this summer. So United are pushing aggressively to try and sign Aaron Wan-Bissaka, and for me, it's an absolute priority that we do that. The right flank has been our weakness for some time. Ashley Young, let's not talk about him at right back anymore, and Jesse Lingard and, and Wan Mata, and everybody on the right flank going forward too. It's been our biggest weakness. 
So signing Wan Bissaka, who is an excellent defensive right back, not as good going forward at the moment. We'll get into that in a bit later on, but his defensive work is outstanding and he could improve our defense so, so much. So should United stump up the cash and pay 60 million? It's a lot. But United, if United are buying a player, add a little premium on top of that. If it's two Premier League clubs dealing with each other, add a premium on top of that. Is he English? Add a premium on top of that. All these little add-ons, it means that wan will go for more than 50, probably towards the 60 million mark, and United just pay it. It's not just a case of throwing all the money at every player to sign every player. But a key signing like this, pay it. Because too often in the last few years, United have missed out on signings because we haven't coughed up enough cash. This is not the sort of player I want United to miss out on because of a bit of cash. I don't want to sign Thomas Munier. I just don't want to sign him. Not in comparison to Juan Bissaka, who I feel suits United so much more. Because he really is a sensational talent. Let's have a look at his numbers last season in comparison to Trent Alexander-Arnold, who I considered to be the best right back in the Premier League last year. His numbers are absolutely phenomenal. Defensively, anyway. Going forward, as I said, not as good. But defensively, twice as many tackles as Trent Alexander-Arnold. Twice as many interceptions. Twice as many blocks. Now, yes, Crystal Palace are obviously going to be defending more, so the defenders are going to have bigger numbers. But his tackle success rate, outstanding. He was one of Europe's most successful tacklers last year. Hardly anybody got past him. And people are sucking off Virgil van Dijk for never being dribbled past. It's harder as a right back because you've got so much more space that you've got to cover. But wan was superb defensively. And out of the two, I'd rather sign a right back who's superb defensively than in an attacking sense right now. He's 21, he's got plenty of growth ahead of him. And he was an old winger, remember? So how he started his career. So he's got a natural attacking tendency, but that needs to improve, his crosses certainly. But defensively could solve our problems and let him grow and become an even better defender going forward. You might have a complete right back. And for me, they're probably the most important players in modern day football. And United have just not got the right one at right back. But Wan-Bissaka could certainly be that player. Now, 40 million is the bid that's been rejected, but United need to go back. And a crucial point to remember here is that reports suggest that Crystal Palace don't want to sell Wan-Bissaka and Zaha in the same window this summer. So if they let one go, they won't let the other go. So United need to move fast and decisively to make sure that the worst case scenario doesn't happen. That someone comes in big for Zaha, Palace sell him, and then they refuse to sell wan Bissaka, and we're left empty-handed. We need to move quick. We move with 40 million. We need to go back with 60. I'll just say pay it. What do you think? Do you think United should go back with 60? Or is that too much? Is this worth the haggle? Or should we be going for Munier? Or somebody else? Let me know what you think about that in the comments, as always. So if United managed to complete those two transfers, Bruno Fernandes from Sporting Lisbon and Aaron wan Bissaka from Crystal Palace, that'll be three signings this summer. A new winger in Dan James, someone who's got potential. A new first-team ready right-back in Aaron wan Bissaka, who can then have Diogo Delot under him as an understudy, learning from him. And then a new attacking midfielder in Bruno Fernandes that's going to add goals and assists and be a new playmaker in the team. Three major signings in key areas that would improve United massively. Add a holding midfielder into that and a new centre-back. It's the summer of dreams, really. And what do you think? Do you think... Those three signings would be good. You know, Dan James, we've already got. But what do you think about Fernandez and wan Bissaka? Let me know what you think in the comments below, as always. And who could those other two signings be? The holding midfielder and a new centre-back. We'll have to do a video on that in the future. As always, if you are new to United People's TV, make sure you subscribe and get involved. Until next time, though, take it easy.